Hello, I'm Liz Zorab and this is By The Farm and today we're going to finish making some plum wine. I started this wine off uh, several weeks ago, uh, six or seven weeks ago now and if you haven't seen that video uh, I'll leave a link on the screen and in the information section below. And although the recipe uh, I started off was for plum wine, in fact you can use almost any fruit, uh, several flowers and lots of vegetables as well to make wine. And the principle uh, is pretty much all the same. So here's the wine I started on the 23rd of August and today it's the 13th of October so it's been, uh, it's been a few weeks uh, and what's happened is that this has pretty much finished fermenting. Uh, and I know that because there are less and less bubbles, uh, almost no bubbles. Uh, going up through the airlock here. So if we just have a look at it, uh, ooh, there's quite a lot of dust on it, uh, but if we just have a look at it there are still a few bubbles coming so it hasn't completely finished fermenting uh, and then at the bottom uh, there is masses of sediment. Now I can see by looking at it uh, that this isn't uh, sugar that hasn't been used by the yeast, this is just the sediment uh, from uh, all the bits that were in the plums uh, when I put the plum juice in there. So the next stage is to take the liquid out uh, and leave that sediment behind because we don't want that in our wine. And to do that uh, you will need another demijohn uh, or another container and it will need to be sterile. And you'll also need some sort of siphoning tube. So here is my, uh, my demijohn. I've just emptied the sterilising solution out of it and giving it a rinse out. Here is my siphoning tube. I use one uh, that has this little cup on the end of it uh, which sits in the bottom of the demijohn uh, and in theory uh, stops so much sediment going in uh, and it has a little tap on the end uh, which works or not uh, depending on <laughs> what day of the week it is. So what I'm going to be doing is putting this into my demijohn and I will need to suck on this end of the tube uh, to bring the liquid up and round and then that will go into my clean demijohn to transfer the liquid in. Because there's so much sediment at the bottom of this I'm actually going to hold this uh, for a while um, to stop it stirring up that sediment. So here we go. Now this demijohn very much needs to be below <laughs> that demijohn uh, for the gravity to work through but um, I'm going to move it in a second because I just want to show you the process um, that I'm going to use. Now this may or may not work with them being level uh, but we'll give it a go. So I'm going to put my tube into the demijohn at this end and because of all that sediment I'm going to hold it. Normally I would let it drop to the bottom. And then I'm just going to suck to the end of the tube. It's not going to work like that, so I am going to have to put it on the floor. <laughs> and there you go, as soon as I've lowered the empty gem, Demi John, below the full one, uh, it's starting to flow. I'm tipping the Demi John um, just to try and get out as much of the uh, clear wine as possible without, without taking the sediment with it. Okay, so I can see a lot of the sediment is starting to go into the into the tubing now and I don't really want that in so that's it I'm done so I have decanted uh, as much as I can out of the full one into the empty one and I've managed yet again to get the siphon <laughs> stuck in the top of it so there we go you don't want to leave uh, all that sediment to settle and dry in the bottom bottom of your demijohn uh, so get that rinsed out fairly soon. So now um, I'm going to top this back up with uh, some, some boiled cooled water. I 
I'm going to put my, my airlock back on. I'm actually going to change the water in my airlock uh, just so it has fresh water because this has been sitting uh, for a number of weeks. And the next thing to do uh, is to make sure that you label it. Uh, I'm putting the label over my previous label so I don't get confused as to which is which. So that now says uh, Plum Wine started the 23rd of August 2018 uh, and it was racked which is the process we've just done on the 13th of October 2018. And I'll now put this uh, into a cool place uh, to sit for between three and six months. Now, how long you leave that uh, is up to you. Uh, I've got to say, we have learned that the longer uh, you leave the, the wines to sit, uh, the better they become. Uh, if you only have one demijohn, uh, you're going to uh, rack the wine into a sterile container wash and sterilize your demijohn and then siphon it back into the same demijohn and do the same process with putting the airlock on it and leaving it. Uh, highly recommend that you get a minimum of two demijohns just because uh, this make, it makes this process so much easier. I'm leaving the airlock on it uh, because there are still some bubbles in there which means there's still some sugars and yeasts going on, still some action happening. Uh, if I bottle it at this stage, uh, there's a very real risk of the pressure building up inside the bottle and your cork popping out. Or if you've got a screw top, uh, there's a real risk that the whole thing could explode if the pressure built up too much. So <laughs> I'm very happy just to leave it to sit uh, for another three to six months. And then uh, I'll go on to bottling, which I'll show you next. So this is a demijohn of... Uh, well, I've called it a mystery wine because I can't remember exactly what was in it. <laughs> but anyway, uh, there you go. The information is that it was started on the 15th of September 2017. I racked it on the 5th of November uh, 2017. And then I racked it again on the 1st of September 2018. So it's a good year and a bit since I made this wine. The thing that I have learnt about these homemade country wines is that you cannot hurry them. Uh, if you rush them, you just don't get as good a wine uh, and you will run into more problems. So it is a case of being very patient. You can see at the bottom uh, there's still quite a lot of sediment. So even though I've wrapped this off twice, uh, there is still sediment in it. And then uh, to get the wine actually into the bottles, you'll need to actually Encourage the wine through until the wine uh, fl starts flowing down and then get it into a bottle. And this is the point uh, which your patience really comes into play because uh, you now need to leave that wine to sit in the bottle uh, for a few weeks to a few months uh, up to maybe even 18 months uh, so just to to show you some wines i made previously uh, here is a pear wine uh, which i started in november uh, 2017 uh, and i only bottled this up very recently uh, Mr. J has tried one bottle of it uh, because it's well over a year old uh, but he's still very keen just to leave that to sit uh, for the best part of another year and maybe have it Christmas uh, 2019. This is a damson wine uh, that I started earlier in the year. I'm really pleased with the colour of this. It is absolutely beautiful. Um, it's a really pretty colour uh, and again uh, we will be leaving this uh, for quite some time to sit and to mature and here's the wine I've just bottled up uh, which will very definitely uh, be sitting for some some time now again it's got a lovely colour uh, it's nice and clear I'm really pleased with it well that's it for me today I hope you've enjoyed seeing the last two stages uh, of how I make a country wine and so Wherever you are in the world and whatever you've got planned for today, I hope it's a fruitful one. And I also hope you'll join me again tomorrow.